Derby Day in Louisville for a few short hours, the most important city in the world. Thundering hooves past the stand. The 61st running the famous classic and one of the hottest. St. Bernard first, Bad Eye second, Buck Thorn third. It begins to look tough for the Phillies. Coming into the stretch, it's still Omaha. The big son of Gallant Fox, 1931 of the Classic, is going to make his daddy proud of him or know the reason why. Flat Eye is dropping back as Roman soldier and whisk below come on. Nelly Flag is out of it. He can't catch Omaha. Willie Saunders boots the Woodward coat home, with Roman soldier a length behind, and that's plenty. Omaha's in. They're plenty of the Saunders liked it very much, and he rode a damn good race. Thanks very much. I'm one of the happiest boys there is in the world today. We're doing Beautiful day in Louisville for the 63rd running of the Kentucky Derby in 1937. 103 Colts nominated for this one. 20 go postwood, headed by number one War Admiral, a good one with Charlie Kurtzinger. He's the eight to five favorite, and he's a little bit fractious at the gate. Settle down there, War Admiral. We're ready. 20 of them coming out of there, and heel fly breaks on top, but the Admiral's out of early trouble. Charlie Kurtzinger sends him up as they come through the stretch for the first time. War Admiral, Fairy Hill on the inside and on the outside it's Heel Fly. Then it's Delore, followed by Billionaire and Pompoons back there sixth, coming by the stand with a mile to go. War Admiral on top, on the inside Fairy Hill, Heel Fly. Then it is Delore, Billionaire and Pompoon as they reach the clubhouse turn. Charlie Kurtzinger tucks the Admiral down on the rail, two on top. Then Fairy Hill, heel fly, as they move up the back stretch. Confidently ridden to this point, War Admiral now leads by two and a half lengths. Fairy Hill second, 
he'll fly his third. Then it is Delor, Pompoon has moved on to be fifth. Then it's Medal is sixth and Reaping Reward seventh. And they're on to the far turn. The Admiral's still there and he'll fly is gonna try, but he can't catch up with the Admiral. The Admiral opens up a couple. Now they move around the turn. The leader, War Admiral, two and a half or three. Who can catch him? Pompoon says I can. He drives up on the outside into second place in the final quarter. Here they come into the stretch. It's War Admiral. The crowd is screaming. Pompoon is on second. Three sixteenths of a mile to go. It's War Admiral. Two lengths. Pompoon's under left-handed whipping doing his best. But he's not catching the Admiral yet. They're in the final sixteenth. And on top it's War Admiral with Pompoon on the outside. But they're waving the stick. Charlie Kurtzing is waving the stick at the Admiral. He's drawing away. He's an easy winner. And here comes the finish. War Admiral, much the best, with Pompoon second. After that, it was reaping reward. And look at the fine stride on this three-year-old War Admiral. And into the winner's circle now comes War Admiral. He's trained by George Conway. He's owned by the Glen Riddle Farm. He gets the traditional roses in the 63rd running of the Kentucky Derby. In Kentucky, it's Derby Day, with 60,000 milling fans eager to see the 64th running of America's greatest horse race. Postmaster General Farley is among hundreds of notables on hand. Young Elliot Roosevelt and his wife are here all the way from Texas, while Broadway sends big Jack Dempsey and his pretty little missus. And now, the big moment is at hand. The aristocracy of three-year-olds, minus stagehand, goes to the post. There's a thrilling second, and they're off. It's a clean break, with Fighting Fox, Bully, and Mountain Ridge jockeying for a spot. Me now, way on the outside, charges across the field just like the famous War Admiral. Now it's William Woodward's favorite, Fox, next to the rail. Me now's coming strong. Now he's alongside, with Mountain Ridge pounding at their heels as they pass the stands on the first lap of a mile and a quarter route. In the back stretch, it's another story. Hell Headley's Meenow is sailing away from Fighting Fox. Myron Selznick's Camp Waits a close third, and Mountain Ridge is fourth in the pack. <laughs> Rounding the turn into the home beat, it's still Meenow. Fighting Fox has dropped to fourth, and now Lauren with Eddie Arcaro up makes his bid. From fifth place, Eddie pushes Lauren right out in front, and they call this horse a sprinter. Close on Lauren's heels and coming fast is Dauber, but his bid's too late. This $50,000 pot is in the bag. Lauren's by a length. Another great derby goes on the books. 22-year-old Arcello and his gallant mount have won their place in the charm circle of Kentucky's Bluegrass Hall of Fame. The camera highlights in the world of sports. The 65th running of the classic Kentucky Derby with all roads leading to Louisville's Churchill Downs where the bands blare and the flags wave and 70,000 spectators await the heart throbs of America's banner horse race of the year. Since early dawn, they've converged upon all vantage points. We're in the wide world of sport. There's nothing quite like it in fanfare, glamour and pulse-pounding thrills. Colonel Matt Wynn has seen them all since 1875. The eight jockeys who will fight it out today. Al Jolson and John F. Curry. Don Amici, screen star of 20th Century Fox, Joseph E. Widener and Mrs. Peter Widener, and here we spot Mrs. William Prime and Samuel D. Riddle. But they're on their way to the post, eight finely trained three-year-olds, the smallest field in more than 20 years, with William Woodward's Bay Cold Johnstown, the heavily backed odds on favor at three to five. They're at the post, start of Billy Hamilton, scans the lineup, a well-behaved field today, watch it, they're all in line, and there they go! A good start, El Chico dashing into the post position along the rail. Johnstown in the number five spot closes in toward the rail. Technician also in there in the fast jockeying as the field blazes down the stretch amid the deafening roar of the crowd. Johnstown, he's number six, leading El Chico by half a length. And here marks the crisis in the speed duel wherein Johnstown meets and stays the challenge of his rival El Chico. For Johnstown, it seems, has settled the issue as he shows his heels going into the first turn of the mile and a quarter event. Three lengths. The great son of Jamestown leads by county a half a length through the good of Chaladon. 
Heather Broom running fourth, technician fifth, El Chico sixth, TM Dawes at seventh. The trailer is on location. He's certainly not in the race. Jockey Jimmy Stout holding Johnstown under mild restraint, but the great Woodward Cold even then increases his lead with every stride. The throng whipped to a frenzy by the display of Johnstown's overwhelming speed gets a final thrill as the Cold pounds down the pay dirt stretch. Unmindful, it seems, of what goes on behind as Chaladon, under the strong urging of Jockey Sebo, displaces Heather Broom for place honors. Johnstown, look at his ears. Tuning in, no doubt, the mighty acclaim of the crowd, a fitting tribute to a fine and speedy colt who at last gives evidence that among the year's outstanding three-year-olds, he stands beyond compare. Johnstown, by a margin of six length. Ninety-five thousand strong, they jam Kentucky's Churchill Downs for the 66th running of America's horse race of the year. And with only moments to go before the thoroughbreds are on their way to the post, let's see who's here. Oh, great crowd, and there's Charles Howard and his wife, then postmaster Jim Farley with Jimmy Cromwell, racing commissioner Gerard Swope, Samuel D. Riddle, then Colonel Matt Wynn, the old reliable, and many others. But now the horses are on their way to the post, and all eyes are on Colonel Ed Bradley's mighty Bimlick, who is the overwhelming favorite. There they go, a queen break. Bimlick first away, Roman, Milan, and Galahadian closing in for that furious battle for the rail. Eight in all in this classic field, and the speediest of them all at the moment is Roman, setting up blistering pace. Let's listen for a moment to the roar of this crowd as Roman leads the parade past the stand. In a bunch at the turn, Bimelik runs well to the outside. Watch him. Now they straighten out for the dash down the backstretch, and the big news is still Roman with Bimelik second and biding his time as Galahadian. Now, running head and head with the Bradley favorite is Ditt, Maya Land, and Soroka with Royal Man and Tiktor trailing far behind. That's the call, but watch it closely. There goes Bimelik. The champ is making his move. In the final turn, it's Bimlick, Ditt, and Roman in a three-way fight. But the slow-motion camera's unfailing eye spots Galahadian, moving up on the rail, a 35-to-1 shot, and it's here that Bimlick meets his challenge, the challenge of Galahadian. The champ gives everything he's got, but it's not enough. Galahadian, toting the silks of the Milky Way farm, is out in front. And if speed and rhythm with a lot of coordination is what you want, follow Galahadian and Jockey Beerman in the ride of their lives. Great horse and a smart jockey, urging that sturdy bay colt to the terrific climax of his racing career. And here is racing's biggest moment. Today, it's Galahadians in a startling upset, paying $72.40 for $2. You'll hear that crowd roar, that is, those who had Galahadian. And the Galahadian, it's not hay. The camera highlights in the world of sports. And they're away. Pounding down the straightaway past the stand. The crafty maneuvering of jockeys raiding high-strung thoroughbreds in the run to the turn. Dispose leading the pack out in front by a length and a half. Corners cap, blue pair, R boots, and Robert Morris closely bunched behind the flying leader. Well away, betting favorite ease smartly by jockey Eddie R. Carroll in the tight going at the turn. Dispose having a run for himself in the early stages here seems well within his commanding pace, but it's a mile and a quarter that these three-year-olds travel with the hardest going yet to come. Down the back stretch, Dispose still the headliner, running a full two lengths out in front. Porter's cap and blue pair running head and head. Our boots and market wise grimly holding on. The brief moment here in the run down the far side when jockeys permit the breather before the crucial tests. Dispose still the smooth striding pacemaker, having already provided the early splurge, now building up to a record shattering climax. But far in the ruck now, follow a colt running six. You see him moving up, it's whirl away. The future book long shot, the unpredictable, whirl away, closing the gap. Mark Carroll goading him on. Whirl away, still coming up on the outside like a dynamo, driving toward the leader disposed. Now tiring perceptibly under the challenge of Porter's cap, Blue Pair and whirl away. 
For jockey R. Carroll now, there looms the critical moment when Whirlaway, number four, heads for the stretch turn. His dangerous habit of going wide. But R. Carroll knows he's mount, and with canny skill and a master's touch, guides the chestnut cone awaited realization of a cherished hope when Whirlaway is acclaimed $61,000 winner in America's greatest run for the roses. Trainer Ben Jones shares the plaudits. As Colonel Matt Wynn, extreme right, also attends the Cup Award, Governor Johnson to Warren Wright. And here, through movie tone slow motion camera, the record shattering stretch run of Whirlaway. His blazing final quarter in 24 seconds flat. A rare study of the little chestnut colt with a long tail, cracking the 10 year old derby time of 20 grand by two fifths of a second. Here then is life's biggest moment in the enthralling story of Whirlaway a three-year-old son of the Aga Khan stallion and England's Epsom Derby winner, Blenheim II. Like father, like son, a thoroughbred born to the purple and the laurel of a champion.